Hello everybody. I was able to create a even more powerful or sensitive uh, supercell using the same chemicals as before. It leaves nice stains on my uh, tabletop. Um, by uh, changing the process, and I'm actually able to see uh, concentric circles around the centripetal uh, convergent uh, field around a magnet. Let's uh, first take a look. By the way, these are just two optically flat pieces of glass, and this is just some hardware LED that you can get at like Lowe's or Home Depot. The reason why I actually have three pieces of transparent tape holding it together is because when the supercells are really, really sensitive like this, the problem is, is that they're easy to destroy. It's kind of like you can create something that's a lot more sensitive, but usually more sensitive instruments are more easy to destroy. So this lets me actually take it apart in about one minute and rebuild it in about five minutes. And these chemicals over here, um, they literally I could rebuild this thing about a thousand times. Let's take a look at a speaker magnet, which is not a strong magnet, it's just a ferrite magnet. Let's actually place it underneath the supercell. And of course this is a toroidal, so the actual magnet itself is uh, shaped basically like the toroidal field of a magnet. You'll see something interesting, and then I'll zoom in. There we go. Let's actually see it. Now, the interesting thing, you can actually see the donut shape. Isn't this fascinating? The uh, holography, now you know the hologram on your credit card, right? Well, a true art hologram, which most people have never seen, is about a hundred times better than that, if not more, depending on how good the true art hologram is. Now, what we actually have here is less than a few microns thin. In other words, the liquid, there's just a few drops of liquid between these two pieces of ultra, ultra flat glass. Um, once you actually press the glass together, most of the liquid squishes out the side and you wipe it off and it leaves stains on your fingerprint. So what we actually have here is across this five, well, this is about Oh, roughly about 10 square inches of glass in total. We have less than about, oh, maybe like 1 50th of a drop of liquid, maybe 1 50th. And yet we have incredible holographic, specifically this is magnetoholography. Now, of course, you can see the donut shape. There's nothing here, by the way. This is not a projection device. This is literally just LEDs, like for the edge lighting of your cabinet. So there's just light shining inwards. By the way, about two years ago, people said, well, you're just looking at the number of lights here. It's like, that's not true. I created one of these devices where the light pours in from the sun, so only one light source. So the sun was able to wrap around in a tent-like structure and shoot inwards into the cell, and you get the exact same thing from a single light source, which is the sun. No batteries, no LEDs, nothing, just the sun powering it. Now, the ceramic uh, or the uh, speaker magnet, of course, is squared off, so it's obviously not rounded, but it doesn't matter what shape the magnet is, the actual centrifugal divergent uh, force and motion vectors that actually uh, show the magnetic and dielectric field, and this is the reason why we see lines, when you see constructive and destructive interference is perfectly toroidal or donut shaped. And of course, the negative image of a donut shape is, of course, a hyperboloid or an hourglass shape. So if you actually take the negative image of this, you will see the dielectric. Now this is a really weak magnet. I'll show you a really powerful magnet here in a second, and I'll show you how much more sensitive this structure, this, uh, this new uh, super sensitive supercell is. But look, as I actually uh, skim along the edge, now realize that the liquid showing the constructive and destructive uh, interference is infinitely, infinitely thinner than a human hair. And what we're doing is we're using the light and the dispersed ferrofluid. The ferrofluid is not clumping, by the way. The dispersed ferrofluid is, uh, is uh, all through this. The only reason why you're seeing light uh, stripes in certain areas and dark stripes in others is constructive and destructive interference between the magnetic and dielectric. Now, I'll explain this in other videos, and I have in the past, but also in my book. You see these little bright spots right here? There's little tiny uh, bright spots along the lines of intersection. You see those here? Let me actually zoom in a little better. You see these little bright spots right here and here and here? You notice they occur at lines of intersection, right? Let me actually... Now this supercell is so sensitive that I actually have to keep moving the magnet, otherwise it'll burn in. You can see like a, a light burn in mark. It's not literally burn, I just call it burn because it's, uh, it's so sensitive, the powerful magnetic field. Even though it's a weak ferrite magnet, it's so powerful that it's... Uh, destroying the supercell. Like I said, that's why I've got it taped so I could take it apart really quickly. Let's go top down. Kind of looks like a black hole, huh? 
Here you see the hypertrochoid pattern, kind of like you see in a dream catcher. That pattern you see in the center of a dream catcher is a hypertrochoidal pattern, yeah? Let's actually take uh, the, uh, the speaker magnet out and uh, let's uh, do a uh, ring magnets, uh, really powerful ring magnets like this, destroy it rather easy. Let's take this little square cube uh, neodymium iron boron. Okay, let's place it there. And also too, I could place it on top. Let's place it on top for a second. Okay, there we go. Let's zoom in and do that, huh? Doesn't matter whether I place it on the top or the bottom. The magnetic field penetrates through absolutely everything. Absolutely everything. But let's place it underneath the uh, supercell here. Here you go. Focus. There we go. Now let's uh, zoom in a little bit here. Of course, the way the contrast. You can actually see rings along the... Uh, Looks like an owl's face, doesn't it? This is the secret of Mother Nature here. This is the actual construct and destructive interference. Here's one pole, here's another pole. But a magnet doesn't actually have poles. What it has is the inverse of counter space, which is specifically force and motion. See centrifugal divergent magnetic field, which of course is not literally being emitted from the magnet. It's literally the ether itself under polarized deformation from the field of the point source singularity that is and what defines the magnet because a magnet is not defined by what is quantitative rather by what is qualitative and i've explained this a thousand times and also to including my book let's show you one pole of the magnet here let's zoom in sorry about that shaky video but if you if i zoom in here you can actually see little uh, concentric circles in the middle now you notice how small the black spot is? Of course, where it's black is a dielectric. This is constructive and de destructive interference between the magnetic and the dielectric. This is literally the lotus blossom. It kind of looks like a lotus blossom, doesn't it? But specifically, from up above, it looks like a dream catcher. It's a hypertrochoidal pattern of constructive and destructive interference. So it was the interplay between magnetic and dielectric because magnetism is the dielectric field. Let me give you the perfect analogy, and this is destructive to the uh, supercell use this really powerful N60 Gauss magnet. People don't understand that actually a more powerful magnet actually has a smaller spatial magnetic field. The reason being, and uh, the, the only kind of good analogy I could come up with where people would understand it in their brains is, is that when you amp up one thing, you also amp up another. So you can't actually make a more powerful magnet without creating more powerful dielectric field. And by creating a more powerful dielectric field, and this is kind of like the cheap man's version of a black hole, it is literally the uh, center black portion will be huge on this really, really powerful N60 Gauss neodymium iron boron. Also, too, the spatial field is smaller. This is why people buy really powerful magnets. They say, I don't understand. I bought a really powerful magnet, and I think I got screwed because the spatial field around it. In other words, you have to get a lot closer to a piece of metal to feel the quote-unquote attraction. And by the way, there's no such thing as magnetic attraction. It's dielectric acceleration. Magnetism is by definition and denotation, force and motion. Let me actually... There we go. Move it over here, and I'll show you how big. See how huge the black hole is, or the black section of the uh, dielectric portal is on this uh, powerful magnet. And also, too, you could see, if I can get a little bit better focus, the concentric circles. You actually see shades. It goes from black to dark red to orange to lighter orange to almost yellow. This is the magnet that will very quickly. Also, too, you can see these bright points right here. You see that? You see how quickly it's destroying the cell? This is what I mean by burn in. It's not literally burnt. It's just literally causing. This is why I have to take the uh, supercell apart when you use really powerful magnets. But uh, let me move this cord over a little bit. Sorry about that. Here we go. This is all in real time. Like I said, this is not a projection device. There's nothing being fed into this. There's nothing inside this black casing other than two pieces of glass, a 50th of a drop of liquid, and these uh, Lowe's Home Depot LEDs, which are shooting light into the cell. And if I get really steep on it, you can actually see, you can actually see the uh, holographic nature of the cell. I can't leave it sitting there for that long because that, uh, I'll just have to rebuild the cell. That's no problem. Let's save the best for last. And sorry about the jittery video, but I'm obviously doing this handheld. Let me use this neodymium iron boron ring magnet. I think it's like a 10 millimeter thick or five millimeter thick. 
um, neodymium, really powerful sucker. Let me place it on here and zoom in. I'll let you take a look as I scoot it. Let me get deep, uh, low on it right here. There we go. Let you take a look. See, there's nothing in the middle of this magnet, but you still see the dielectric portal, this little black spot right here in the middle, hovering where nothing is. Magnets, by the way, do not accelerate towards one another. What they do is they accelerate towards the lowest pressure mediation of a dielectric acceleration. Let's actually place the ring magnet underneath the uh, supercell and uh, show you what is. Let you take a look. Zoom out a little bit. Yeah, this uh, ring magnet will uh, quickly fry this uh, supercell. It's already frying it, actually. If I lift off of it, you can actually see the burn marks. Yeah, it's only about five minutes to rebuild it. And the liquid doesn't cost anything, not really. Since it only takes a few drops to build one, big deal. It's like rebuild it. But look at the magnetoholography. If you actually had this in your hand, you'd be surprised. Now look at this, if I get it on a steep angle, even though you don't have this in your hands and you can't see what it is I'm talking about, look at the holographic depth. You actually have this trough, you know, sloping towards this null point where the entire, and of course the magnetic field of the ring magnet is the exact same geometry, even though larger and more perfect. Uh, they're both toroidal. The ring magnet, of course, is a toroid, but the magnetic field is also a toroid, and that's actually one of the reasons why uh, ring magnets destroy um, the supercells so quickly. If I lift off of there, you see? See the burn marks? There we go. Well, what you're looking at is the face of Mother Nature here. Magnetism is everything, the volume inside the balloon, the air inside the balloon of everything in the universe that has magnitude and uh, mass. Things only have magnitude due to magnetism. And what the hell defines a, ma a, a black hole is where dielectricity, just like this super powerful magnet except a really poor analogy, is where dielectricity overthrows magnetism's ability to uh, keep something within the visible universe. If I were to, which I can't, pump up the uh, dielectric power of this little tiny magnet like a billion fold, it would literally vanish from the universe. It would not be there anymore. It would actually still have the same field. Well, it'd be a lot different than this. It'd actually all look black with maybe some light fringes around the edge. But when I lifted the supercell off, of course, the supercell would get sucked into it, right? Because it would be a black hole. It would not be there because the only thing that actually keeps this physical magnet in the visible universe is magnetism only. That's the only thing that keeps it in the universe. Things only have magnitude magnitude due to magnetism. And uh, everything is a fight between the conjugate geometries of force and motion, inertia and acceleration. Everything is centrifugal divergence and centripetal convergence. Respectively, the inverse geometries of the torus, i.e. the geometry of force and motion, i.e. magnetism, and the geometry of dielectricity, which is the hyperboloid or the hourglass shape. The negative image of an hourglass is a torus. The negative image of a torus is an hourglass. I said these are the geometries of, now look at that. Isn't that fascinating when you look at it deep on? I wish you could hold it in your hands because the video does it some justice. But when you hold it in your hands, oh baby, that's when it really gets faster. Let me put it on its edge here. That's the last thing, close out this video. And uh, I know which side by the way, there's a phase shift on each and every magnet between North Pole and South Pole. You notice that this side looks reddish and this side looks bluish. You see how the blue fringe over here and how the red tint. This is the geomagnetic precession or the Lamour frequency that actually defines the phase rate of phi to one. That's why I know this side over here is the North Pole and this side over here is the South Pole because this one actually has the phase disparity towards the blue shift of phi, or 1.618, and this one has the phase shift of one. That way, just looking underneath the ferrule cell, I know this side of the magnet's the North Pole and this side of the magnet's the South Pole. I know that's the case, girlfriend. And you see these burn marks in here? That's the reason why I'll have to rebuild the cell. It's already been burned in by this really powerful sucker. But 
uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video and I could explain one of the secrets of the universe. In simplex, it's hard to do that, right? Let somebody else try to do that. It's already burned in. Let's just put it back on there, right? Exacto mundo. I hope you like this video. If you do, check the link below. Let me know what I could help you with. And uh, you're looking at genuine magneto holography. There's no video feed device. There's nothing at all here other than some hardware LEDs, two flat pieces of glass, and a 50th of a drop of liquid. That's all that's there. You see the concentric, if I zoom in, you see the concentric uh, circle uh, disparities, uh, differentiations, gradations. Kind of like a, a red version of a rainbow. Dark, dark, dark red, lighter red, lighter red. You see that? And of course, this black shape is the periphery of the magnet itself, of course. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you like this video.